when you look at the chart on top, this talks about student cases, and it goes back to September of 2020, and brings us all the way through to the end of June. We can see how many cases are in based on where the student is and what their setting is. The chart below is about the staff at a school. So this just means not just the teachers, but everyone else who works at the school. And we see where the cases were, are they in school during the likely infectious period, in other words, two days before. Then there's another group that we look at in school during the likely exposure period, 14 days before, and then where they remote, hence the orange dot. In other words, were they not in school at all? So when we look at data like this, what we're trying to just sort of discern a little bit is not only how many cases are in this age group, but where are they getting their cases from to some degree, although we get that from case investigation and contact tracing. A little bit of this too reflects like where are the people who are getting the cases. One of the things you can see in the top chart when you look here in the orange bubbles, which refers to people who are remote back to school, and you see there's a lot of cases in the orange group. That just refers to the community transmission. And just because someone's in the blue group that they're in school during the infectious period doesn't mean they got COVID in school. In fact, it's, it's really not the case. But still, community transmission is what drives transmission in schools. In other words, kids tend to get COVID when they're outside the community as opposed to in schools. So that's some of the data we pull here, but we keep track of what's going on in the schools. 